going. Hi everyone, it's Cheryl and I'm here at the North Baltimore Public Library in the conference room where it's nice and quiet so that I can have a nice conversation with the author that I'm visiting with today. I'm seeing Kitty Burns Flory and this is her book that has a lot to do with North Baltimore. It's the quest for Inez. Welcome, Kitty. Thank and you I, very much. I haven't had a chance to ask you, have you ever been to North Baltimore? I'm guessing you probably haven't. I haven't. No. I haven't. But, I, I, but I was you, in, have, you have been here in your imagination. Certainly, I have traveled there in my imagination. Because I, I was in the book. Yeah. Takes place in North Baltimore, which is fascinating. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this book? Yes, I, I would love to. It's um, it's about my lost grandmother. Um, my mother was born in 1910 out of wedlock to a woman named Inez, Inez Willick. From, mm -hmm. um, she was at, well, I'll start with the beginning of the book. Um, at the beginning Great. of the book, in fact, if I just read this little tiny prologue, it'll make that it a would be lot. lovely, yes. All right. On a spring day in Syracuse, New York, in 1928, my mother, Geraldine Goodson, age 18, she was born in 1910, age 18, was working at a department store selling hats. Let me just get rid of this thing. Um, she glanced up to the mezzanine. If we all remember what mezzanines were in department stores, <laughs> probably some people watching this will not remember. Um, we don't have those in North Baltimore, we, but we, I, did, I, we don't I, have them I, anywhere, I don't think. <laughs> um, she glanced up to the mezzanine and saw her mother and another woman watching her. My mother was selling hats. She waved, they waved back. Not long after that, her grandmother, the famously no nonsense Nana Woodruff, took Geraldine aside and told her it was high time she knew the truth that Geraldine had been adopted as an infant, that she had, she had been illegitimate, that Cora and Horace Goodson were not her parents, and that her real mother was Inez Willick, who lived in Toledo, Ohio. Remember that woman you saw up on the mezzanine with mom? That was her, that was Inez Willick. Hmm. When my mother told me this story, story 40 odd years later, she said, not without bitterness. I hardly looked at her. All I noticed was that she wore glasses. One vague sighting, and then, like a rare bird glimpsed in a forest far outside its natural habitat, Inez Willick vanished back into the mists of Toledo. Mm -hmm. And that was basically all we knew about her, my mother and I. And my mother, of course, had been curious all her life, but when she finally told me about it, I said, Ma, let's see if we can find something out. Mm -hmm. So she was quite excited about that. And, and so the first thing I did was go to... Um, no, I, I hired a genealogist who told me that Inez had come from North Baltimore. So I went to, to, to um, Bowling Green to look Wonderful. at the re records at the state archives. Um, yeah. And uh, I drove there from New Haven, Connecticut, where I was living. And I stayed overnight. I forget where, some motel or something. And I looked at all these records, some of which were nibbled by mice, destroyed by fire, just disintegrated. You know, they were old. Yeah. But I did find out where she lived on North 2nd Street, I think. Mm -hmm. and who her siblings were. There was a census document, the actual document, a handwritten. This was before Ancestry.com or anything like that. Right. And it was before Google, back in the <laughs> primitive days when you couldn't just look something up. I can remember that. To drive to North Baltimore, <laughs> I mean, to, to Bowling Green. So yeah. the, the little bit of information that we had is what we went by. And I managed to find out a few other things. Um, but it wasn't until I did have my DNA analyzed through ancestry mm -hmm. and was put in touch with a, a cousin let's see a second cousin in california who was the son of inez's sister and he was wonderful he still is he's a wonderful guy he sent me a shoebox full of photographs and letters and junk general stuff that, that, that his mother me. had saved uh, so um i that was there were pictures of inez and letters from her one one or two letters from her um, just a lot of goodies, pictures of mm -hmm. her parents so I could see what my great grandparents looked like. Mm -hmm. And and we just went on from there. Mm -hmm. But everything well, came back to North Baltimore, you know. It was, that, that was, yes, it was interesting that way, yeah. Yeah, well, and I think so many of us have similar experiences. Whenever you're doing genealogical research, you know a little bit about your family, but filling in all those gaps and sometimes there are big gaps like oh, yeah. you discovered. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, 
sometimes you can fill in names and dates, but that isn't really the story that we're. It doesn't tell you anything. For. No. Yeah. Yeah. So and the big I thought thing. when I read this book back in, I believe it was February. Um, I thought it was a very interesting book because you structured it entirely differently than I expected, which I don't know if anyone's ever told you that before, but I assumed it would be simply a fictional version of your grandmother's life. Uh -huh. But instead, you gave us lots of, of information in between the story, which was a wonderful way to approach it. So mm -hmm. I almost felt like I was discovering things as you were. And I thought that was a great, a great approach. Thank you. That was really what yeah. I wanted is to carry the reader yeah. along with me. And then in between the actual research, there's this made up story of an Inez like young right. woman, probably right. a sort of glorified Inez. Yeah. You know, she was a. And, and that was Agnes, right? Yeah. Agnes, yeah. which is the same name as Inez. Is, okay. Just, Inez is the Spanish form of Agnes. Right. And right. for some reason, Inez was a very popular name in 1888 when my grandmother was born. Really? I, yeah. I was curious about that because it's such an unusual name, but now, it, yeah, but then it was, yeah. It's in, I think it's the top three, na th third name yeah. that, for girls. That, that's interesting, yeah. yeah. And it, it's it's interesting how all those old-fashioned names are coming back into right, <laughs> right. popularity yeah. again, too. Yeah. So, yeah. So I thought it was a fascinating book, and I think you did an extremely wonderful job um, revealing everything to us. Um, when you started the story, did you plan on um, calling her Agnes, the fictional version from the beginning, or was that something you added along the way? Well, yeah, I wanted it to be not Inez, but it's something. So I looked up the different versions of Inez, mm -hmm. hoping I'd find something good. And yeah, there's Agnes, which I think yeah. is good. Yeah, well, that was very clever because um, I think some readers would be very confused going back and forth. Yes. So exactly. that made it I knew simple. She couldn't have you the same exactly. Name. Yes. So the, the hardest thing about, of course, making up the fictional version, or not the hardest, but the most challenging thing was that I knew and know nothing about the, the my mother's father. Right. Nothing. Yes. Yeah. So I had to make him up. Yes. And uh, I had a good time doing that. I made him into like, you know, a but grandfather he is based on a real person no no i have no, no not idea. at all okay no. so I, I was curious about that if he was completely fictional or yeah no okay I had nothing to go on i don't know cool. if her, this guy was from north baltimore who then went right. to syracuse where my mother was born in syracuse mm -hmm. how how inez got to syracuse to have this baby or why she went i have no idea but in the, right. in the made up part in the in the novel part as opposed yes. to the biography part right I, um I sent him to law school in Syracuse and mm -hmm. she follows him there mm -hmm. and they're living together, which was quite unusual in 19. But that is all fictional. Mm -hmm. It's all fictional. Yeah. I have no idea Wonderful. what really had happened. I'd give yeah. anything. I wish somebody would read this book and say, oh yeah, that was Uncle Fred. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Funny. Yeah. I know it, it would be interesting if if you could if someone did reach out to you and say that that you had been correct in something or something I was know, wrong. Or, yeah, and but, you know yeah. These, get these DNA matches, and I'm always hoping it'll be from somebody that I've from a branch of the family that I've never heard of, and that would be this. But right. it's always you know some third cousin on my father's side or something that you know right. I don't yeah. need this information. Yeah. But so far yeah. nothing, but I I remain hopeful. Yes. So was this written pre-COVID or during the COVID? Oh, pre-COVID, definitely. Pre-COVID, pre okay. Yeah. I assumed it probably was because I, I thought, well, you're still kind of uh, flexible in your travels and Oh, absolutely. This was, I so. think this was published in 2015. So I was writing yeah. it. Yeah, so it was. A, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. And, and I want to say. And everything has changed since then. <laughs> everything has really changed. Yeah. yeah, not for the better in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I meant to say when I when we started is that today is actually Inez's birthday. Oh. April 14th. What a happy, happy coincidence. What a coincidence. Nice. Yeah. So she would, she would be 135. Oh. Uh, <laughs> isn't so. that amazing? It's remarkable to, yeah, yeah this yeah. kind of coincidence that life brings you. So, yeah. Right. And I oh, was glad fabulous. to find that. I didn't know, you know, when she was born or where. And of course, she was born in North Baltimore. April 14th, then. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And not right. far from here. I assume she was probably born on Second Street. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where they lived at the time. And yeah. of course, there were, I think, seven kids. Yeah. And uh, not all of them survived. Maybe more than that, maybe eight or nine kids, and only if, like five of them survived, and mm -hmm. uh, which is not unusual. No, no, that was probably typical. Yeah. yeah. For the period. Yeah. yeah. Sadly. Right. And then the other interesting to me, the, the, the most interesting thing that I found out in all of my research, and you may recall this from the book, is that Inez's father, Jacob Willick, it was the first cousin of Henry Clay Frick, the yes. evil industrialist who was the most hated man in America for a while. And um, but not by your family. <laughs> he he gave them he sent them money. Yeah, yeah they were yeah, really he, poor. He was they a had very godfather for your family. Yes, and he he yeah. wasn't friendly, but they would write him and ask him sort of pathetically for money for fuel bills and yeah. um, and he would send them a check. No comment. No you know love Henry right. Clay Frick or anything. Just right. Like, just a, a, a check in an envelope, but he did it. Mm -hmm. So that was fascinating. And, you know, the Frick Museum in New York City was mm -hmm. his house on Fifth Avenue, his mansion that he filled yeah. with art from all over the world. He was in addition to being an evil strike breaker and industrialist and, you know, bad, generally, generally bad character. He was a wonderful art collector. He spent millions on paintings that are there now. And, um, and I, I had been to the Frick Museum. I lived in New York for a long time. And I had been to the Frick Museum several times before I wrote this book. And I thought, wait a minute, this is my cousin's <laughs> house. <laughs> and there's a big picture uh, yeah. of him, a portrait over the one of the fireplaces, one of the many fireplaces, oh. marble fireplace. There's a huge portrait of a very handsome guy. And I just sort of stood in front of it for you know, a long time thinking, hey, yeah. you know, first cousin three times removed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing when those kinds of things are revealed and it's like, well, how, you know, who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, that was, an, I mean, this was definitely an outlier in our family, yeah. this multi-gazillionaire, you know, was, yeah. uh, really something. <laughs> well, very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, um, I thought it was a really fascinating book. And the one thing I wanted to do a little bit more research on, but I hadn't had a chance, was um, part of the fictional um romance takes place in the library I know. <laughs> Which I I know. Love. <laughs> yes and who uh, tom bolts told me was yes. it the library or the school the library wasn't actually there yes the library it had not yet its current location in 58 so it would have been part of the school at that time uh, which, which probably made it actually more feasible that they yeah had, this is they would true. have been at the school this is yeah true. right yeah so I hope I didn't make too many mistakes, but that was yeah. And yeah. I, it never occurred to me that, that the, the library wouldn't just be the library, you know? Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. In most communities, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And it was a Carnegie library, of course, as most libraries were. And Carnegie was one of Frick's, Andrew Carnegie was one of Frick's mm -hmm. partners in mm -hmm. crime. He's got a better reputation than Frick did, but they were birds right. of a feather. So oh, yeah. Funny little yeah. Things. Too. Yeah, well, it, it's it's nice to think that even though they they did some things, they they maybe made up for it in other ways, right? We like to think so. That, we like uh, to we like to hope that our our uh, our uh, historical is is balanced out. Not not all that's bad right. or good. That's, yes, I don't like yeah. to think of people as A being you know, yeah. all bad yeah. or all good. They're always <laughs> nuanced a bit. So yeah. I'm hoping. I think my my third cousin, first cousin, three times removed was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I don't recall. Did your mother pass away before you wrote the book? Yes, she died yes, in two thousand one. I, I thought so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She would have been thrilled. She might not have been thrilled with some of the sort of memoir stuff I put right. in about her and right. and our relationship. But I'm sure, but, yeah, I'm sure she had a lot of um, of uh, thoughts and and you know dreams yeah. and certainly hopes for her mother and right. what her life yes. was like. Right. Yeah. right, right. And she was glad to at least know by then her name and where she was from because right. she, I was able to find out quite a bit before my mother died. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was too bad. And, and I think I, I mentioned this in the book that in the 60s, I, Inez died in the 60s, mm -hmm. um, but she was in Toledo and I was, I was born in Syracuse. I was living in Syracuse still at that time with my husband and my mother lived there most of her life. And we could have driven, you know, to Toledo from Syracuse. That's not a big trip. We could have all had yeah. Thanksgiving together or Christmas right. or something. And we'd right. known of her existence. And it was so frustrating that she was long dead when I found out. Right. It really was. 
at no. that point we all we had was a name yeah so, so many yeah. missed opportunities that, yeah uh, it's true yeah, yeah. so so I, I thoroughly enjoyed the book, and I hope that lots of our readers here at the library will check it out. We have a couple of copies here. Oh, so good. thank you so much for sharing this with us. Are you working on another book at this time? or Usually writing a novel. Since, since then, I, write, I mostly write novels. I write fiction. Yes. Yes. Since then, I, um, I've written a couple of other mm -hmm. novels. I live in Amherst, Massachusetts, and so I've written a historical novel that took place here. But oh. most of my um, my books are contemporary, you know, more contemporary. Right. Than that. I, right. It's fun to do historical novels because you get to do the research. But exactly, it's yeah. I just and I just I, like I, to I get the feeling things. that you you love the research involved with with writing as well. Is that true? Oh yes, that was yeah. fascinating. Oh, I loved it. And the more I found out about North Baltimore, which is just this little dot, teeny weeny yes. dot yes. on a map, you know, it really <laughs> came to life. So it was really yeah. good. It was a fun book to write. Oh, good. Well, we certainly enjoyed it. And I hope that lots of readers here will will pick it I up and so, enjoy yes. it too. And, um, and uh, remember Inez and, and your family on today and, and uh, when we celebrate National Library Week, um, I, I guess she was probably a library supporter. I know she was a big reader. <laughs> I don't know if she was a big reader or not. I made it up. <laughs> But well, I'm we, sure we will, she's... we will think of her as that. <laughs> I'm, she'll be there in spirit, I'm sure. And yeah. um, <laughs> so. And and who who would ever imagine that you know your story would be talked about, you know, at, at uh, your hometown library, you know, a hundred years after. Yeah. Ines, <laughs> Ines and my mother are you know both you know really spinning around in their graves. <laughs> I know. Well, the library celebrated its hundredth birthday back in 2019. Oh. So we had a big oh. celebration oh, then. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So all, all this right. historical so, and yeah. And being so connected with historical society is a wonderful thing for our community too. So, yeah. Yeah. So I missed it just by a couple of yeah. years because I never would have been yeah. going the earlier part of the 20th century, but yes. like 10 years <laughs> earlier. How interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Well. So, um, so happy library day. Thank you very <laughs> much. And thank you very much for sharing your story with us and your family's story. It's a fascinating read. Thank you for inviting thank me. So much. It was fun. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.